Hi, my wonderful crochet friends. Today's tutorial is this really beautiful Christmas tree. This is the finished product. I have little cute miniature bell ornaments on the Christmas tree and a beautiful crochet star. Look at those layers. It is so beautiful. Look at that. And get ready. Look at that. A beautiful, beautiful comb. So this is what you all are going to learn how to make today. See you real soon. Hi, my wonderful crochet friends. My name is Ashley, and today is the part one of this amigurumi Christmas tree. This is what it looks like up close. Here's our star and the top of our tree. We have these really, really lovely layers with ruffles, with the imitation snow. So this is the tree um, undecorated and I will also, um, I will show a short clip of it decorated um, with uh, cute little bells and stuff so you can see what it looks like. But this is our tree. So we have these um, really cute uh, ruffles here which are half double crochet, chain one, half double crochets. And we have our, our rows in between. Also, this is a perfect cone shape. Check that out. Look how beautiful that is. And it stands up, no problem. No problem at all. This would be great for your um, dining room table. This would look fantastic on an, um, an end table, coffee table, in front of the tree. You can also use this as a tree topper. This would be a perfect tree topper. This could also look great on your fireplace mantle. This could look great on your porch. You can make this as a gift. This would be a, a definite, uh, beautiful uh, centerpiece for your table. The materials you will need to make the body of the tree is I am using. I love this yarn and the color jelly bean, a jelly bean green. This is a number four weight yarn, a category four weight yarn. And this here, this is like a, a sparkly tinsel yarn. This is Yarn Bee Scrubology. 2.0 white and I bought both of these yarns at Hobby Lobby and we will be using a four millimeter crochet hook for amigurumi for small tight stitches. You will need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle to weave in your ends. To make your star, you will need a small amount of yarn of your choosing for your star. You will need the same size hook, the four millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a 
and sewing needle and thread to sew your star on top of your tree. And also, if you would like to know uh, where to uh, purchase my new um, uh, Christmas bracelet, this is the Christmas candy cane bracelet. And I bought this at Hobby Lobby. And right now at Hobby Lobby, it is 50% off. So you will get 50% off of $5.49. And it's Christmas 2023, the Christmas shop. And this is the item number 5065065. And also my new um, Mickey Mouse uh, bracelet which I absolutely love also. So it's got the gold and the uh, silver and the rose gold little Mickeys with the little um, rhinestones. And the, the clasp is so easy. You just squeeze it down to tighten and loosen it. And I got this at TJ Maxx. And it came with a really, really pretty a Disney box and it was $12.99. The item number is 313072. And it's originally $18, but I got it on sale for $12.99. And it for my star, this yarn here, this is hometown Lion Brand Hometown yarn. In the color Madison it is a bulky six weight yarn so what I did was it looks like it's four strands and I removed one strand I do not need a real thick chunky yarn I need a much smaller thinner yarn so I just removed um, one of the strands of the four To begin, we are going to make a magic ring. And we are using the same size hook. Um, depending on what yarn, what size yarn weight you use uh, for your star, I would go with whatever hook size you feel is right for that size yarn. But for this yarn, I'm going to use the four millimeter crochet hook. So we have our ring. We're going to yarn over and pull that strand through that, that loop there. We're going to chain one. And we are going to make 10 single crochets in this ring. So we're going to go back through the middle of that ring and go up and yarn over. You can yarn over or yarn under. It's totally up to you. And I am going to make a single crochet. And I am going to make nine more single crochets. You should have a total of 10 single crochets. I'm going to take this strand and pull. I'm going to gently close that ring. And 
and now I am going to find the chain to my first single crochet. So right here, that would be that uh, chain one. I'm going to slip stitch join. We will now chain three. We are going to make one extended double crochet, so we will wrap our yarn around our hook. We will go into that same chain, yarn over, pull that yarn through that stitch, I'm going to yarn over and only pull through one loop. I will yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, chain two, in the next chain, I will make one slip stitch. I'm just going to pull that a little tight. I'm going to make one slip stitch in the next in the next chain here. Pull that tight. And I will repeat. So I will chain three. Make one extended double crochet. Chain two, we'll go down to that next chain, and make one slip stitch. Pull that slip stitch tight onto the next chain and I am just going to repeat this all the way around. So slip stitch, tighten it down, chain three, one extended single crochet in the same chain. Chain two, slip stitch into the next chain, slip stitch into the next chain. Tighten it down, chain three, chain 
one extended double crochet chain two stitch slip stitch chain three and we need five of these so one two three four so we need one more chain two and I'm just going to slip stitch down into that slip stitch join So we will now cut our yarn we'll pull this tighten that down I'm just going to try to pull that yarn tail into the back of my work here this magic ring I'm going to pull that tight to close that up. So I have both of these yarn strands in the back of my star. And you can keep these on for a nice uh, ribbon effect. But these, all you have to do, and you can stitch these if you want. Uh, mine is staying in place, which is great, but those double crochets, if you, that um, extended double crochet, if you just kind of pull it in the back, then your uh, star takes like the perfect shape. I think it's really cute. But you could always, you know, stitch it closed like this with your sewing needle and thread that would also look really nice just a couple stitches on each of the um, points of the star or you can just leave it um, just like this so there's our star so I'm just gonna put this off to the side here um, and we are going to begin um, our body of our Christmas tree. And I apologize, I have a yarn rash on my hand, uh, on both my hands, from crocheting so much um, the past week uh, for all these uh, crochet patterns. Uh, so I apologize, that does happen to us if we... Uh, crochet too much um, so now all we need is our yarn for our Christmas tree and our crochet hook before we begin I wanted to 
I'm let you all know if I haven't mentioned it before this pattern the best thing about this pattern is it is very forgiving and very forgiving means um, the stitch count does not have to be right and this is for every row it does not have to be exact um, that is a really really great thing about this pattern so you can make um, mistakes on every row and um, as long as it's not like a ton of mistakes um, but I mean um, say like at the end of the row um, you, you'll realize I'll, I'll point it out everything will be fine this will be uh, very easy for you um, because the stitch count does not matter um, so uh, let's begin so we will make our slip knot and put our slip knot on our hook we are going to begin at the very tip top part of the tree so we will be working um, top down and we will chain one loosely so we want to kind of make a well let's kind of make our slip knot just a little bit bigger let's stretch our slip knot just a little bit we don't want it real tight we want to chain one loosely So for, for row one, what we will do is our, our beginning chain here is made up of three loops. So right here you have one loop, two loops, and then there's a loop in the back. And this is called the, the back bump right here. And you can make your chain a little bit bigger to make it easier to go into that back bump but we are going to go into this back bump and we are going to make eight single crochets in this back bump now for this christmas tree what i did was i yarned under and it's totally up to you you can yarn over if you feel more comfortable in doing that um me personally when I began this, I got used to the yarn, the yarn under it. It wasn't a problem for me. Um, I was able to remember to do that um, after a, a few rows. Um, so I will be yarning under and to yarn under, you're just going to swing your hook and grab that yarn. But like I said, you can yarn over if you'd like. But I will yarn over to complete the single crochet. But this is a lot of fun. I really like how this pattern doesn't require an exact stitch count. So that is the really great thing about this pattern. So I have one single crochet. Now I have two. So I'm just continuing around that that back bump and we need eight so I have three four five And what I do is I just use this finger and I pull, I pull that down. Six. Seven. The yarn under is only a little tricky for me in the beginning here. 
but you can always yarn them over. I have eight single crochets and what we will do is we will slip stitch join in that uh, chain of the first single crochet and when I slip stitch join I like to I like to yarn under so if you would like to yarn over throughout the pattern but for the slip stitch join if you would like to yarn under when you yarn under it will give you a very nice um, uh, close uh, for that uh, for that slip stitch join and I am going to use a, a stitch marker and um, that's up to you if you would like to do that if you don't have one you could put a, a pencil and paper and just uh, write down um, each row if you would like if that'll help you uh, to keep up so um, we are now going to be working on row two so we are going to chain one and in each of those eight single crochets you're just going to make one single crochet in each chain. And it'll want to curve in on you, so just kind of um, curve it the opposite way. And we will slip stitch join and then this will be the uh, beginning top of our tree And I'm going to begin row three now, so I'm just going to go ahead and adjust that to row three. So for row three, we are going to repeat row two. So we are just going to make one single crochet in each chain. Continue with one single crochet in each of the eight chains. We will now slip stitch join and then we will begin row four. For row four, we will chain one. In the same chain, we will make two single crochets.
in the next four chains we will make one single crochet one two three and four and we will repeat the pattern so our next chain will be an increase it will be two single crochets and the next four chains will be one single crochet in each Or the next two chains sorry we will slip stitch join into the first first single crochet of our row We will chain one for row five. For row five, six, and seven, we will repeat row four. So the very first chain here, and we are on row five, we'll get two single crochets. One. Two. The next four chains. We'll get one single crochet in each. And just remember, you can make mistakes in this. It will not alter the pattern. So we got one, two, and. Two, one, two, three, and four. So next chain here will get an increase. And then the next four chains will just be one single crochet in each. So that's one, two, three and four and then we will slip stitch join in that first that first single crochet of this row so for the next let's see the next two rows you will repeat this pattern so for row four, five, six, and seven, you will start off with two single crochets, then the next four chains, one single crochet, and then you will repeat that pattern. So go ahead and finish up row six and seven, and I will meet you back for row eight. We are now on row eight. We will chain one. And now we will just make only one single crochet in each chain. Okay. 
continue all the way around with one single crochet in each chain. And I've just finished row eight, and this is what your uh, top will look like so far. So we will slip stitch join in the first single crochet of the row. We will chain one, and for row nine, we will now make one front post extended single crochet in each chain. So what we will do is we will insert our hook in the first chain, and then we will insert our hook from the back into the next chain. And you can yarn under or yarn over. It's totally up to you. So we will yarn over and pull that through. We have two loops on our hook. We will yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. We will go back into that same chain here. And then from behind, go into the next chain. So there's our post stitch right here. We will yarn over, pull that through. We have two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. We are going to repeat this in each stitch all the way around. And by doing this, this will pop our ruffles out. So we are now going to begin this section. We will now begin this section here of our ruffle. And it causes it to bulge out. And then underneath here, if you look, we'll have chains underneath. And once we complete our ruffle, we will join and work into these chains right here, these ridges right here. And don't worry, it's, it's not difficult. But just go ahead and finish this repeat. in each chain. I am at the end of row nine. I will slip stitch join into that first stitch of our row. Pull and tighten that down. For row 10, we will chain one in the same chain, we will make two single crochets. In the next three chains, we will make 
one single crochet. And then we will repeat. So the next chain here, we'll get two single crochets. Next three chains, one single crochet in each. And then repeat. Repeat the pattern all the way around until the end, and I will meet you back there. And this is what our top looks like so far. So we will now slip stitch join into that first single crochet of the row. And now we will begin our ruffle. For row 11. We will chain two. In that same chain there, we are going to make two half double crochets, chain one, two half double crochets all in the same chain. So we will yarn over for a half double crochet. We will go into that same chain, yarn over, pull that through and up. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. We will make another half double crochet chain one and two more half double crochets all in the same chain We will skip the next chain and slip stitch into the next. So skip this one, go into the next chain, and when you make your slip stitches, try to make them loose. The next two chains will also be one slip stitch, and just try to make those loose. In the very next chain, we will repeat the pattern. So we will repeat the two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet in the same chain. Skip one chain, next three chains, one slip stitch in each. So this very next chain here, make two half double crochets. Chain one, go into that same chain and make two half double crochets. Skip the next chain, the next three chains, it's one slip stitch in each. And I am going to try to make these 
loose, not tight. And repeat in the next chain. Repeat this around and just repeat the pattern as is. So even if you end right here on a ruffle and you need to slip stitch into the next chain or into this part, then go ahead and do so. I will meet you back at the end and I will show you exactly uh, what I mean. So I'm at the end of row 11 after I made my last um, two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet, I have two chains left. Now if you'd like, you can skip this and just slip stitch into that next chain. And what we will do is you can slip stitch into this chain one or chain two it does not matter um, once we do this we're going to join our white yarn so we have the start of our ruffle our ruffle leaves so now we will clip this yarn. We will grab our white yarn. This here, just pull this and tighten that down. We will worry about that later. And let's see, we'll go into right, go into right here, this first half double crochet chain here. We have our white yarn. just going to yarn over and pull that through that half double crochet we will chain one and now we are going to go into each we're going to go into each chain and we are going to make a loose slip stitch We're going to go into each chain, even that chain one space. And we definitely want these a little loose because the next row we are going to work into these. And there is a reason why we are slip stitching in each chain. You can choose not to slip stitch, but it will give you a much nicer, uh, cleaner uh, look. So, right here, if you look at the underside of the leaves, it has a nice, clean look. You see how 
Um, let's see if I can get this to focus well. Do you see how, how clean that looks? That is because of these slip stitches right here. If you chose to not do these slip stitches, then it would not look as, uh, as nice and neat as that looks. So we are just going to continue to slip stitch in each chain all the way around. Continue to do that all the way around until the end, and I will meet you back there. At the end, we are going to slip stitch join in that very first slip stitch. We are going to chain one, and in each slip stitch all the way around, we are going to make two single crochets. So we're just going into the chain of those slip stitches and making two single crochets in each in each chain. And I also want to let you know this tree would look very beautiful even without this this white tinsel snow yarn it will look very beautiful i i promise you that um you don't have to use this yarn to make it look uh really beautiful it will look great without it but for the tutorial's sake i am doing this to um just to teach you what to do if you would like to add this yarn to your tree but uh, me preferably i would like to have a tree uh without this um just because you know i have one um i have one with you know with the tinsel snow but i would also like to have one without the tinsel snow because it, it will look very beautiful without it too see so i'll put one in this one and um this brand this yarn bee uh brand they do have another scrubology yarn that is very similar to this that is a holographic color and it's like kind of like um holographic rainbow colors which is also very very beautiful but i chose this because it reminded me more of uh tinsel snow it kind of looks like tinsel but then it kind of looks like snow too And this tree would also look very, very pretty with um, tiny ornaments, like little beads um, to uh, decorate it. That would look very, very nice also. Or like little bells. Little bells would look really nice. Little tiny ornaments. And like for the star, if you did not want a star, 
you could always sew on um, a really pretty button. I've seen some uh, really nice uh, star buttons if you didn't want to uh, crochet a star. Or you can use beads or you can use charms. I also uh, thought about possibly using this charm right here, this angel charm. And then just sewing it at the top of the tree like that. Like, look how pretty that would look. Thought about doing that. So you can always do that. Um, oh, you could put a bow. A bow would look very nice, too. You, you have lots of different um, options that you can use to decorate your tree. And see, this causes the that wavy ruffle effect. So go ahead and continue two single crochets in each slip stitch all the way around, and I will meet you back there. When you're done, we are just going to slip stitch join. We will cut our yarn and you want to cut just a long enough yarn tail just to weave in your ends. You can go ahead and weave in your ends underneath or you can just wait to do that at the end uh, once you're finished. So right here when you fold this, you will see these chains here. Right here. And this will be our row 12. So you will insert your hook right there. You will swap yarns, so you will go back to your green yarn. And you will grab and you will pinch. You will yarn over. Pull that through and chain one. And you can choose to crochet over top of your yarn tail if you'd like. In that same chain that we joined our yarn, we will insert our hook. And we will make two single crochets. This first this first single crochet, try not to make it too tight. That way you can get back into that chain at the end of your row. You will make two single crochets in that same chain. The next three chains you will make one single crochet in each chain so you'll see your chains here Here's my next chain. So it's two single crochets in that very first chain. The next three chains get one single crochet. So I've made two single crochets. 
here's my third and then now I will repeat the pattern so in the next chain here that next chain that gets two single crochets it's one and two next three chains it's one single crochet in each I'm gonna move this yarn out of the way so you can see what I'm doing so I've made two single crochets so I need one more here's my chain right here There's my next chain. So you'll see like these, these little curves here right above that are your chains. You see these ridges here? These are your chains. When we work into these chains here, it does not affect the outside, which is a good thing. So let's see. So we make two, one, two, three. So my next chain here will get two, we'll get an increase of two single crochets that's one and two next three chains gets one single crochet in each it's one two are you starting to see your chains now and there's three which seeing it in person will be a lot easier than seeing it on this video. So we are just repeating that pattern. Two single crochets in that same chain. And then one single crochet in each of the next three chains. So you just repeat this all the way around. Until you're finished for this row and my last chain here will get two single crochets and I know that's a little little different from most conventional patterns because we started with two but that is fine and and this is what I mean also by it's a very forgiving pattern it does not have to be exact it does not have to be perfect as long as you apply your increases on the right rows that need increases and you follow along with your um, section here, it'll still look great. It'll still look the same. You won't be able to tell a difference. So that's, that's what I love about this is you're just you're just growing this like a cone and adding those beautiful ruffles to it. And even if you miss a stitch or, or you forget to, um, let's see, I thought that was a slip stitch join, but that looks like a stitch there. Let's see. 
but as long as you try your best to get this right, it's going to look great. It is. I, I promise. It's it's going to look great. So I guess I had one more, one more stitch there. And then I slip stitch join. So even if I make a mistake on each row at the end, it doesn't matter. It's still going to look great. So for our next row, we are going to be on row 13. So row 13 is just going to be one single crochet in each chain. So no increases on this row. We're just going into each chain around and doing one single crochet. And repeat that all the way around until the end and I will meet you back and at the end here we will just slip stitch join in that first single crochet like we have been and then we will chain one to prepare for the next row and this here all we have to do is just fold that down. Isn't that cute? So for row 14 is an increase row. So we will go into the same chain and we are going to make two single crochets I need to try not to make that first single crochet so tight now we will make one single crochet in the next four chains so before two rows before we was making two single crochets in one chain and then the next three chains were one single crochet now it's two single crochets in the first chain and the next four chains will be one single crochet in each chain and then that will be our repeat pattern for the row so it's one two, three, and four. And then we repeat. Next chain will be two. One, two in the same chain. The next four chains will just be one single crochet in each. so our tree is growing like a cone a perfect cone if you look here at the inside of our tree it grows like a perfect cone all the way from the tip tip top isn't that beautiful And that's with, I know I've probably made a few mistakes in here, and it does not affect it. It does not have to be perfect as long as you basically follow the pattern and try your best, it'll still come out the same.
so I am at the end of row 14. I will slip stitch join in that first single crochet there. For row 15, we are now going to make the front post extended single crochet so we will chain one we will go into that same chain and from behind pop our hook out into the next chain yarn over pull that through the stitch we have two loops yarn over pull through one we have two loops yarn over Pull through two. We will do this for each each single crochet. So we'll go back into that same chain there and back out through the next. Yarn over and then pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to repeat this all the way around. So we're beginning another, um, uh, I guess you, we can call it a leaf ruffle. Repeat that all the way around to your very last stitch and I will meet you back. So we are at the end of row 15. So we will slip stitch join in our first front post extended single crochet of the row. Now we are going to make our ruffle. So we are going to chain two in that same chain, same process. We will make two half double crochet. So it's one. Make another half double crochet. chain one and then in that same chain two half double crochets we will let me get this to focus we will skip the next chain and then in the next three chains one loose slip stitch. That's one, two, and three. Next chain, repeat. So in the next chain, Two half double crochets, chain one, two half double crochets, all in the same chain. Skip the next chain, make one slip stitch in the next three chains. That's one, two, and three. And also, if you choose not to add this, this white uh, 2.0 Scribology yarn, 
your ruffles will look like this, which actually I think that looks really cute like that too. If you imagine your tree with like little, little ruffles, either way, it'll look great. And this will look so good on your dining room table or on your um, end table, next to your couch, on your coffee table, on your kitchen counter, in your bedroom. You could sit it on the floor um, next to your fireplace, on top of your fireplace mantle, on your porch. This would look great on your porch. Or you can give this away as a Christmas gift. You know, I'm sure your mom or your grandma or your daughter or your, or your son or your daughter-in-law, I'm sure any of them would love to have a handmade Christmas tree decoration that they can use every year. I'm sure that they would love it. So all you have to do for this row, and this is row 16, is just finish making your, your ruffles, your half double crochet, chain one half double crochets, and meet me back right here. I ended with two, oops, two slip stitches, and I am just going to slip stitch in either that chain one or that chain two. Either one is fine. Now I'm just going to clip my yarn and grab my, my white yarn. And repeat what we did before. Now as we go along, once we get down to about halfway down, our uh, pattern will be a repeat pattern for each section. So I want to I wanna go over that with you real quick. So once we get down about, and I'd like to decorate this. I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and pick me up some beads to decorate my Christmas trees. But once we get halfway down and and once we get to this point i will go over this with you all of these rows here from where you rejoin underneath like if you needed to rejoin right here so when we rejoin and we make a few rows and then we do the front post extended single crochet and then the next row and then the two half double crochet chain ones. So from here to here, we'll each set will be a repeat. So that'll make it a lot easier too. So once you get about halfway, you'll just each set, you will repeat. It'll be the same thing. So that'll be a lot easier too. You just got to get past a few, like I think two more two or three more of these sets and then after that will will be a repeat so it'll be it'll be easy to remember and also i don't know if you've noticed but when we join with the white i haven't been counting these as rows so i've only been considering the whole body of the, the green part as the rows. So we ended right here on row 16. When we rejoin right here in this ridge of these chains, that will be considered row 17. So the white here, this isn't considered row 17. This is just an add-on. Um, because you might not want 
this white. You might want to keep you might want to keep it just the way it is without this uh, white trim. So we're just going to repeat what we did before. I'm just going to go into each chain all the way around. Just try to make your slip stitches uh, loose so that they're easy to get into. This chain one, you can just go into the space if you'd like and slip stitch. So we're just repeating what we did before. You just repeat this all the way around. And I will meet you back at the end. So here we are at the end. I slip stitch joined and I chained one. And now we just make our two single crochets. And each chain and each slip stitch. all the way around and you can yarn under or yarn over does it matter it's totally up to you um, I've been getting in the hang of yarning under just to um, get tighter stitches. I have realized that um, yarning under will give you really nice tighter stitches for amigurumi. And that is why I have been yarning under instead of over. If you can't get into your chain to make that second single crochet, then don't worry about it. It's not going to make much of a difference if you, if you skip a couple. So just continue to fill in those slip stitches with those two single crochets. And I will meet you back at the end. And once you reach the end here, you will do the same thing. You will clip this yarn. And then we will turn it upside down. And then here's our chains that we will work into. right along here on for row 17 we need to fold our ruffle leaves down and find the chain located right here we're going to join our yarn chain one And in the same chain, we are going to make two single crochets. And 
in the next nine chains, we will make one single crochet. We will slip stitch join in that first single crochet. We will chain one and for row 18 and 19 will be one single crochet in each chain all the way around. So this row and the next row will be no increases. Go ahead and finish row 18. Slip stitch join in that first single crochet chain one row 19 repeat row 18 and slip stitch join in the first single crochet and i will meet you back for row 20. i finished row 19 and i slip stitch join and i chained one now i'm ready for row 20. so for row 20 we are going to make our front post extended single crochets just like we did before so we are going to make that for row 20 so for row 20 will be our front post extended single crochets so one front post extended single crochet around every single crochet and we will do this all the way around for row 20. Finish that in each post of each single crochet all the way until the end and I will meet you back there. I am at the end of row 20 and I am going to slip stitch join. chain one for row 21 and for this row we are going to increase so for the for our first stitch here we are going to make two single crochets In the next three chains, we are going to make one single crochet each. And then our repeat pattern begins again. So in this next chain, we are going to make two single crochets. 
next three chains, one single crochet. And then our pattern repeats again. So go ahead and finish up this row and meet me back at the end. We will slip stitch join in that first single crochet. We will chain one. I mean, we will chain two. I'm sorry. We will chain two. And this row here for row 22 is going to be our ruffle. So we are going to repeat what we did before. The chain two, two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet, and then we'll skip one chain, next three chains, one slip stitch in each, and then we will repeat the two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet. So for our, when we make these, uh, these ruffle leaves, it will be the same thing every time. So we will do the same thing with those two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochets, and then you will join your white yarn and you will slip stitch in each chain all the way around. And then you will make two single crochets in each chain all the way around. So this is row 22. We have our chain two. I'm making the two half double crochet, chain one, and two half double crochets all in that same chain. Skip one chain, go into the next, and make a loose slip stitch. Next two chains, a loose slip stitch. And then we repeat our pattern. Next chain, our two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet. So just repeat this row, I mean repeat this around for this row and then you will join your white yarn again and make your snow edging and then we will start off right here for row 23 and I will meet you back right here. For row 23 we will join our yarn chain one in the same chain here we will make two single crochets In the same chain. In the next three chains, we will make one single crochet in each. In the next chain, we will make 
two single crochets. So we are repeating this pattern, two single crochets in the same chain, and then in the next three chains, one single crochet in each. So for row 23, you will repeat this pattern all the way around until the end and you will slip stitch join in the first single crochet of the row and then we will begin row 24. So I just finished row 24. I slip stitch joined in the first single crochet of the row and I chained one for row um I mean I finished row 23. Uh row 24 and row 25 will be one single crochet in each chain all the way around. So continue on with one single crochet in each chain all the way around. Slip stitch join in that first single crochet of the row. Chain one and repeat. So row 24 and row 25 will be one single crochet in each chain around. And I will meet you back for row 26. We are now on row 26. So for row 26, we will make our front post extended single crochets. So we will chain one, go into that stitch and go back and around that single crochet and make that extended single crochet. And we will do this around every single crochet for this row just like before and I will meet you back at the end of this row to begin row 27. I just finished row 26, the extended single, the front post extended single crochet row. We will chain one and we will now make two single crochets in the same chain and this is for row 27. So we are building, we are building our leaves right here. So what we will do now is we will make one single crochet in the next three chains. And now our pattern repeats. So the next chain, we will make two single crochets. The next three chains, we'll get one single crochet in each. So continue this pattern all the way around for row 27, and I will meet you back and then we will begin row 28. So for row 27, I slip stitch joined and I will chain two. And now we will make our, our shell ruffles. Just like here, we will make 
are two half double crochet, chain one, two half double crochet. So we have our chain two, and making the two half double crochets, chain one, and two half double crochets all in the same chain we will skip the next chain and then in the next three we will make loose slip stitches one slip stitch in each In the very next chain, we will repeat our pattern. So that's all you have to do for this row. Let's see, this is row 28. So we are on row 28. And after you finish this row, you will join your, uh, uh, your, your white scrubby yarn and you will slip stitch around and then you will make two single crochets in each chain just like before for our, our other ruffles I just finished row 28 and this is what it looks like so far and so all together for our Christmas tree we will have eight sections let's see one two three four five six seven eight eight sections in total with these ruffle leaves so when you rejoin here and you work out this whole section from here to here you have a total of eight of those for our entire christmas tree so um we will I rejoin our yarn for row 29 and this is our halfway point so we are halfway done with our tree and row 29 through row 33 I believe it is let's see here yes so uh, from row 29 to row 33 will be our repeat pattern so, see, one, two, three, four. So we finished that much of our tree. And from here on out, so for the next uh, four sections, each section will be a repeat pattern. And if you want to make your tree bigger, you can just continue that repeat pattern and let it grow and grow. Uh, so this will make it a lot easier. We are just going to join our green yarn for row 29. And like I said, row 29 through row 33 is going to be our repeat pattern uh, from here on out. So we will chain one. And in the same chain here, we will make two single crochets. In the next nine chains, we will make one single crochet in each.
In the very next chain, we will repeat our pattern. So our next chain will be two single crochets. The next nine chains will be one single crochet in each. So that is our repeat pattern for row 29. You will repeat this pattern all the way around and then you will slip stitch join in the first single crochet of the row and I will meet you back here for row 30. I slip stitch joined and now we will begin row 30. So we will chain one. In the same chain, we will make two single crochets in that same chain. Now for the next 10 chains, we will make one single crochet in each chain. After you complete your one single crochet in the next 10 chains, we will repeat our pattern. So in the next chain here, we will give two single crochets all in that same chain. And then the next 10 chains will be one single crochet in each. And then you will repeat your pattern. So continue on with your repeat pattern until the end and slip stitch join into that very first single crochet of your row and then we will begin the next row. I slip stitch joined and our next row will be row 31. And also, I did uh, make a mistake. Our repeat pattern from here on out is row 29 through row 34. Um, I did say uh, row 33, but it is row 34. So um, we will begin row 31. So we will chain one and we will be making one single crochet in each chain so we'll just go into that same chain make one single crochet and then make one single crochet in each chain all the way around So this um, repeat pattern from here on out will really, really help you out a lot. You'll be able to fly right through it. 
just repeating each section so each section will be the same and like I said if you want to make your tree uh, much larger than mine you can do that just by repeating row 29 through row 34 so for row 31 here just continue one single crochet in each chain all the way around and then slip stitch join right here in the first single crochet of the row and I will meet you back to begin row 32. I slip stitch joined for row uh, 31 now we are on row 32 so we will chain one and now we will make our front post extended single crochets in each chain around. So we will just go into that same chain and then go in from behind into that next chain right around that single crochet, just like we have before. We will just pull through one and then yarn over and pull through two for our front post extended single crochet. So we are just going to repeat this all the way across for this row. One front post extended single crochet. So you will repeat that all the way around in each chain. Slip stitch join in the first front post single crochet of the row and then we will begin row 33. I slip stitch joined at the end of row 32. So now we will begin row 33. So for row 33, we will chain one. And our pattern for this row is just one single crochet in each chain. So put one single crochet in the same chain and then one single crochet in each chain all the way around. Continue one single crochet all the way around. Slip stitch join in that first single crochet of this row and then we will begin row 34. I slip stitch joined for row 33 and now we will begin row 34 and this row will be the last row of your pattern repeat so your pattern repeat will be row 29 through row 34 so for this row we will chain two and this will be our um, two half double crochet chain one two half double crochet a ruffle pattern so we will yarn over and in that same chain we will make our two half double crochets chain one and going back into that same chain and making our two half double crochets skip the next chain and into the very next chain after that 
we will make one slip stitch. And we need to try to make our slip stitches loose. And then the next two chains will be one slip stitch in each, just like before. And then we repeat our pattern. So on the next chain, we will make two half double crochets, chain one, and two half double crochets, all in the same chain. We will skip the next chain, go into the next chain after that, and make one slip stitch. Next two chains, one slip stitch in each. And then we repeat our pattern again. So you will continue on repeating your pattern all the way around until the end, and you will slip stitch join and then after that, you will join your, your white tinsel yarn and repeat the pattern for the edging. And then you will rejoin for row 35 into any chain. And then you will just keep repeating. You will just keep repeating your pattern for each section. Each section is row 29 through row 34. Yeah, and you'll be done before you know it. This will just fly right by. And then after that, we will decorate our tree. We will sew on our star and decorate our tree. Yay! <laughs> So I will see you all um, at the end when you get finished with your Christmas tree. After you complete row 34, you will rejoin right here and you will complete the six rows per section. From here all the way until you have your ruffles so that's row 29 to row 34 so six rows so um, my tree I completed until I completed 52 rows so three more three more sections is is what I did uh, for my Christmas tree so if you would like to um to either make it exactly like mine or if you would like to make yours even larger um just remember you'll complete that six row section over and over and over and it will grow and grow into a a big perfect cone to to weave in our yarn ends, what we will do here is, so we should have about um, three or, and to weave in our ends, what we will do here is right here, right at the tip of your ruffle, you'll see your yarn ends here. You might have three or four so what we will do is we are going to hide these yarn ends right here right under your ruffle so grab your yarn needle I'm going to use this wire here this is just um, some thin wire that I cut about this long I folded it in half and I twisted the ends. So let's see, I'm going to start with the green. So 
So you can go ahead and weave in your ends now or later, totally up to you. But what I did was I hit them right in through here. You can either whip stitch it through those stitches right there, or you can do it another way. It's totally up to you. Like if you want to hide this little bit right here, you can go back. And just go through those and it covers that right up. Let's see one more. One or two more should do it. Oops, yep, that easy. So I can go ahead and clip that. And I'm just gonna clip it very, very close. And now the the white yarn ends. The, the white yarn ends are so thin that I should be able to fit that right into my yarn needle. And I am just going to hide these in the white section here. So I'm just going to go right through it. Just like that. And no one will ever know. It will not be noticeable. And I just clip that down. And then the other one, I'll go along the opposite side. I have it upside down. So I'm just going to just go in through those stitches. And if you need to wash this at any point, always remember most washers will tear apart your crochet projects, especially if it has like that, um, that barrel, um, that shimmies on the inside, um, that, you know, kind of jagged barrel that will tear up your crochet projects. Um, I always, wash my crochet projects by hand and I always let them air dry now I'm not sure if the, the dryer could easily tear it up too um, I had uh, I had made a beautiful beautiful um, bandana cow once it was gorgeous oh my goodness it was made with a really really chunky like really really big a velvet yarn and I had mixed another um, like Karen cotton cakes yarn in it just to show like some color like some blue color in it it was gorgeous and I had washed it and when I pulled it out of that washer it was just destroyed it destroyed it so um, it is so sad when that happens you know um, because you spend all that time making something that that you plan on wearing and um, so just remember that 
something like this, spot wash it, um, hand wash it, and, and just let it dry. I, I would not throw it in the washer at all, or the dryer at all. Um, but that is all you have to do. Just weave in your ends, just hide them underneath. You won't be able, you can't tell. You can't tell. And do that with each side. Now you might have um, some yarn ends on the inside. And all you need to do is clip them down. Just clip them down as short as possible. And it won't be seen. And that's all you have to do for that. And, um, uh, Oh, the star. I want to show you what I did with the star. Look what I did with the star. Oops, sorry. It's kind of, it's upside down. There we go. Look at the difference. So you can either, in same star, same pattern as before in the beginning of the video, um, you can either have a star like this or like this same star but remember when i said this um this uh extended double crochet it bulges out the back so what i did was i took a sewing needle and i stitched it i went straight through here let me move this out of the way I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So let me let you look at that real good again. Look at that perfect star. Now it's more I like pronounced and more pointed. It looks more like a, a star. Isn't that beautiful? That will look so much better. Like so much better. So this is what I did. Uh, sewing needle and thread. It's just regular sewing needle and thread. So here's the star that we made in the beginning of the video. And here is the back of it. And you'll see right here, this is the extended double crochet. That's bulging out the back. So what we're going to do, I'm going to join right here, take that needle, I want to go straight through. And now I'm going to go back through the other way. So I'm going straight through the star and stitching going up to that point. And maybe one more time. I just need to make sure I have a long enough tail to make a tie at the end. I'm going to go back through one more time just to get it on this side. And now I'm just going to stick my yarn straight through, or the thread of the yarn. I'm 
I don't want it to pull it too tight. And then I'll begin again. So right here. Oops. Well, I don't want to do that. Don't want that getting caught in there. So I'm kind of giving it a tug because when you pull this, it's going to pull that tight. See, and that makes it, it makes this bulge out more in the back, but look at that. Like it makes it more, more pointy. And then I'll just do it again on the next one. Without gathering up these yarn tails here. And then I'll go back down through that edge of the star to the other, the, the other star point. And I'll pull this, pull that tight, then pull that back. There we go. So I have three, three points that look perfect. Now I just need to finish the other two. And that's all you have to do. To make your star look like this and you can sew it on whichever way you think uh, looks best and you can leave this dangling for just a cute little effect or you can clip it and just sew it on the top and I will show you how to do that also To sew on our star, we will need sewing needle and thread. And this is the, so this is the back where we joined each row. You can barely see that. So I'm going to put my star in the front here. And I'm just going to hold it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the tip of the tree with the sewing thread just to attach to the tip of the tree real well and then so since I'm in the back here my uh, sewing threads in the back. I'm going to go in from the back of the star. Right there. Pull it down. And now I'm going to go in through the front. Through. 
through the top of the tree. Now I'm going to go back through the star. Get a nice tight tug. And I'm going to go back through top of the tree. And I'm just doing this a few times. Just so it's attached very nicely. Very nice. That's very pretty. Very, very, very pretty. I want to go through that star again. Oops, I won't go over that far. Let's see. Oh. There we go. That's, that's a good spot. Now I'm just going to tie this thread and you can do this from the back so that your thread's not in the front. And I probably should have done this, but I think this is going to be fine. I don't think when I tie it down real good, I don't think it's going to be noticeable because it's up underneath. It's up underneath that. That is perfect. That is so perfect. And I really, really like how the star is so, like, pointy and pronounced, you know, like a perfect star should be. I'm going to use these fine scissors. I got these at Walmart. They're called Pelican scissors. I really like them. Like really sharp tips, fine tip cutting. Really, really love these scissors. I love the pattern. I love it. The feel, it's lightweight. Perfect for cutting uh, sewing thread, yarn, all of it. All of the sewing type of crafts. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then I like this, how this kind of looks like hair. And it drapes down. I love that. I love it. Let's get a better look at it. And now we are going to decorate. Now we're going to decorate. So I had went to Hobby Lobby. And um, I got this bracelet. This Christmas candy cane bracelet. And I also got a nutcracker as well, but I don't really have time to painting just yet. And um, all their Christmas stuff at Hobby Lobby, their Christmas decor, is all 50% off right now. So this bracelet, 50% off. These bells, 50% off. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, my nutcracker. My nutcracker here, my little wooden. My wooden guy right here that I can paint. Nine ninety 50% off. And this actually, the the solid painted ones are twenty one ninety nine, and these unpainted are nine ninety nine. So I grabbed me one of these because I know I can add hair. I can add um, hair to it. I could add yarn like this to it for hair or faux fur. I can paint him up. I can make him look absolutely amazing. Like, look at him. Isn't that neat? I got that for five bucks. Very proud of that one, for sure. Plus, I love, I love my candy cane bracelets. I love it. So these bells I got for a dollar a piece. 
because they're $1.99, 50 percent off, a dollar a piece. And I grabbed mini ones, and they got silver ones too. So, but I chose gold. I chose uh, gold with the red, green, and blue. So we're going to attach some of these uh, to our Christmas tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the mini bell with just sewing needle and thread. So I'm just going to choose a spot, kind of thinking maybe right here. I'm going to choose it just, you can either do it tight, like right here. Ooh, actually, you can have them like this or like this. And now I need to decide, do I want them hanging off the tip edges? Or do I want to place them on the ruffles like like ornaments. Let me see here. Let's just drop some of these. Let me just get a look here at what this would look like if I placed them on the ruffles. That doesn't look bad. Actually, it looks very nice. It looks like ornaments. Or, I kind of like them hanging off the tips. I think I'm going to hang mine off the tips. And then, actually, I might place some on the inside of the ruffles as well. See, so I'm going to attach right here. So I'm going to go in, attach that thread to it really well. Then I'm going to go in through that part. And then back down through that white tinsel yarn. And then now I'm going to tie it. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that a lot. I do. All right. So, um, I'm going to attach one more with you all. And then I'll attach a few. I'll pause the video. And I'll attach a few more. Just to uh, show you what it looks like. And you can use these. Um, right now, Hobby Lobby has all their beads on sale, 50% off right now, and all their Christmas decor. And I think their yarn is 30% off right now. Um, they got some really good sales going on, but I would just check around Michael's and Joann's. I'm sure they got sales going on right now too uh, because of the holidays. Um, if you order it online, it it could take you a little bit uh, to receive um, a package in the mail. Um, so totally up to you. But uh, I know Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby's got a great deal going on. I was going to get beads um, at Hobby Lobby, but I chose the bells. I, I chose to stick. I chose to stick with the bells. So these tips here are the ruffles. I'm just going to go through. 
go in and attach it and then go through the top of the bed. And then I go down through that the tip of that ruffle. Tighten it and then tie. Very cute. Ah, oh, so cute. This is going to be a great Christmas present, also. Absolutely adorable. When you give this away, I'm telling you, your family will be so happy. Like, so extremely happy. You know? Like, they're going to love this. Like, this would be an awesome Christmas present. You know, something that your family member could put away and get back out as soon as Christmas starts and keep it for forever. They really, really could. And keep it forever. And it honestly does not take long to make this tree. Like you, you all saw, I made half of the tree within two hours on the video. So you can get this tree done in a day. You really could. If you really wanted to, you could. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's kind of cute. Oops. Look how cute. So I will meet you all back in just a minute to um, show you all uh, what it looks like with, um, with more cute little bell ornaments. Here we are, guys. Here's our Christmas tree. Isn't that cute? So don't forget to hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, and subscribe. The subscription bell is right below the video. The like button, the thumbs up is right under the video. And comment. Let everybody know how great this, this uh, Christmas tree is and how much you like the video. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys soon.